Words appear. Whose planned life is it anyway? In association with Sterling Creation and VIP Tech Production present S. Donna. Donna Jordan answers your questions and offers you tips and tricks on being an author, an expert, a sight loss coach, and an advocate. Ask Donna the expert. Hello everybody and greetings from Donna at the Ask Donna Show. Back with you for yet another week. Happy to be with you for next yet another week and I thank my wonderful friend Victor Rubia and uh, for giving me this opportunity to be with you. I wear a different hat every week and it's just just great, it's just unique to be able to do so. So, you know, I'm hoping that my shows are not too mundane, not too boring and I want to encourage you to write to me, to give me your feedback, tell me what you think. I'm always open to suggestions. And if there is something that you would like me to talk about on any of my shows, hey, do not hesitate to send an email to me at my temporary email address, donnajodham at gmail.com. Again, donnajodham at gmail.com. D-O-N-N-A-J-O-D-H-A-N. Yes, indeed. So, for this month, we have already covered um, the Ask an Expert, or I should say, I have already worn the Ask, Ask an Expert hat. I have worn my author hat. I have worn my sight loss coach hat. And today, it is my so-called Ask the Expert hat. All right, time to dig in. Hmm? All right, the topic this week that I have chosen for my Ask the Expert hat is how does one know that when they hang something on the wall like a mirror or a picture that it is straight? And personally, as someone who is blind and vision impaired, I find it extremely difficult. And most of the time, I ask someone psychic to help me, my mom, anybody else who is close by to make sure that things are straight. Of course, you can use a ruler to help you out, but I find it a bit clumsy in my point of view. You know, so we have to figure out if it is straight, right? And how does one go about choosing the right location to determine where to hang something? For me, first of all, I figure out or I, I determine what the picture is. I need a description of said picture, and then I would determine where I would want to hang it. It's in the living room, the dining room, the kitchen, my office, my bedroom. If it's a mirror again, you know, one can decide where it is to be hung. And also, the thing is, you need to be able to hang picture or mirror in a, where there is a suitable space, or if there is, where there is enough space to hang it, right? Very important very important to find the right spot. Now, I will tell you that sometimes the psychic person may think that the right spot is somewhere different to where you may think it is. But at the end of the day, it is up to you to decide where you want to hang your mirror, where you want to hang your picture. So, there's always going to be some sort of a conflict between you and those helping you to decide where it is, or nothing wrong in you deciding where you want to find your picture or your mirror. Because at the end of the day, it is your picture. It is your mirror. 
and you know sometimes it may not look very good at the way you put it but you know you got to decide that you are the boss so you decide where you want to hang your picture where you want to hang your okay good Um, I want to sort of give you another topic um, for my Ask the Expert uh, hat for this week. And it is all about how does make, how does one make fitness programs more accessible? And this has become so very important during our pandemic. Yeah. Fitness programs need to be made more accessible, especially so now that people are using the virtual way of doing it, they're using videos to do it. What we need to do is to ensure that these fitness programs have enough audio description if they're being done virtually so that we can follow what is going on. Very, very important. And you need to attract those most in need. And those most in need, in my humble opinion, are seniors and persons with a disability. We are the ones who really, really need to find um, fitness programs that are accessible. Because it's more difficult for us to find them to start with. And when we find them, we've got to make sure that they are accessible. Okay, so it's very, very important. Seniors, as I said, are very much in need of accessible fitness programs and persons with disabilities as well. Okay. Right. If you'd like to subscribe to my free monthly uh, if you'd like to subscribe to my free monthly newsletter, you can do so by going to www. DonnaJohnson.com slash subscribe. Again, www.DonnaJohnson.com slash subscribe. And Donna Johnson is spelled D O N N A J O D H A N. Right? My new letter is called The Blind Lifestyle Newsletter. You can read more about this newsletter or, you know, look at some of the back issues of it, present issues as well, by going to www.donna.com slash tbln, okay, www.donna.com slash tbln. Hmm. Okay. So there you go. And I hope you you do subscribe. Okay. Right. And if you want to read more about me as a so-called expert, you can go to www.donnajohnson.com Oop, I made an error here. You can go to www.sterlingcreations.ca slash askanexpert.html One more time, folks. www.sterlingcreations.ca slash ask an expert dot html and sterling creation is spelled s t e r l i n g c r e a t i o n s okay all right now it's time for the mental stretch i really i'm so pleased with this feature of mine that i have introduced you know, you do a physical stretch, you do all kinds of different stretches. Why not a mental stretch, eh? And how does one use a mental stretch? Easy. You use one of your senses. 
as part of your mental stretch. And you would be amazed to know how the sense of touch can be used to help stimulate your creative usage, stimulate your imagination, refresh you, recharge you, regurgitate you, you know, just, just give you a, a really new space mentally so that you could get there. All right? So, let's look at the sense of touch. The sense of touch could be anything. Now, you know something? Think of it this way. You have a pet, and you go off and you give your dog a nice, healthy, vigorous pat on his back or her back. It's a sense of touch, isn't it? And if you touch your dog and your dog responds mentally, you feel good that you have touched something that is responding to you. Or you touch the hand of a baby. A baby with a green, soft hand with wee soft fingers. Yes, indeed. And what does that do for your imagination? Wakes up the imagination, doesn't it? Wakes up the fact that there's another little being right next to you that you can touch, and this baby will respond in some way, shape, or form. The baby may grab your hand, or try to grab your hand. The baby may be laughing or smiling, the baby may be crying, but you know, if the baby cries, that's okay. The baby is responding to you. Okay? Alright. So, this is the end of my show for this week. And if you would like to contact me, my temporary address is donnajohnham at gmail.com. T O N N A J O D H A N at gmail.com. I'd love, love, love to hear from you. Love to get your feedback. Love to hear your suggestions. Please do not be shy. And as I said, this is a temporary email address. I'm working on getting a more permanent one. When I do, I will be announcing it. So, thank you for tuning in this week. Thank you for listening in. And again, thank you to my dear friend, Victor Duvia, for giving me this chance to be with you. Have a good day, have a good rest of the week, and see you next week. Bye for now. Tune in every Wednesday morning at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, 7.30 a.m. Pacific, for Ask Donna on Whose Blind Life Is It Anyway?